our special guest choir. Now, those of you who listen to the recordings of our services, you're missing out on the music. You're missing out on some beautiful preliminaries. Sometimes you miss out on praise reports, but we can only record so much. We're not allowed to record somebody else's songs, but we just had a special guest choir came here all the way from Washington, D.C., and they pre presented uh, that song, Healing. Ladies and gentlemen, that song has blessed many people, many people, and have in, 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 uh, elevated their faith to the place where they believe God for healing, and God is the healer. So we want to encourage those of you who visit with us by way of YouTube or Facebook or the website and uh, by way of the recording, we encourage you to come on live with us if you can. But we understand, we understand, and uh, we just want to apologize that you cannot get the songs and, and some of the praise reports. But uh, we thank God that you are here, and we believe that you'll get enough in this message and in the scripture and in the prayer and in the anointing that God has upon this ministry to bless you. So welcome again. We thank you for choosing choosing to worship with the online church. Praise God. Dustina's got a praise report, ladies and gentlemen, from her household. And so we're going to ask Dustina to come and share uh, about uh, what's, what's happening in her household. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, church. Yeah, um, so this past Tuesday we had an online church that we join daily and the pastor evangelist he he pretty much read Shelby's mail he don't know this girl but he read her mail and she was overcame with the motion and the Holy Spirit touched her she got saved and in the process while she was being saved my daughter rededicated her life to the Lord and was filled with the Holy Spirit. She was. She jumped up. She was excited. She didn't understand it, and I told her she was on a spiritual high. <laughs> and she was. She got prayed over. I anointed both the girls. I prayed over them. And by the end of the night, she just. She was exhausted, and she slept like a baby that night. But she felt the Holy Spirit and the Lord's been working on her and show, opening her eyes to a lot of things and it's, it's kind of overwhelming for her but pray for her and pray for destiny that the Lord will lead them and Shelby said she wants everybody saved now she's talking to everybody <laughs> so we, we know the Lord's going to rise up the youth and he's going to use them to save this generation and when they need lots of prayer for the obstacles that they're about to face as well. But pray for her, pray for her family. She's still wanting her parents to get saved as well. They're going through some things, so if you could just keep them in, prayer, in their prayers as well. Praise God. Thank you, Justina. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's a praise report from from Tennessee, how God is moving there, and we thank God for what he's doing. Thank God for Dustina for that praise report. When I read, Dustina, when I read about uh, your girlfriend's, your, your daughter's girlfriend coming to spend the summer with you, I began to pray right then that if she's not saved, she will get saved. So God has Amen. answered a lot of people's prayers. You see, church, we are in this together. We are partners together with one another. We are partners, and we have a responsibility to partner with one another. There should be no jealousy in the church, as Dusty and I placed on the on the uh, screen, and and no no jealousy, no anger, no bitterness. But in the body of Christ, we see that, and 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 we've got to shut it down. We've got how do we shut down jealousy by walking in love and binding that spirit of jealousy, and 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 don't let anybody from any denomination or any congregation. Uh, uh, put you down. You just keep on walking in love. Turn the other cheek. 
walk in love, walk in love. And they will know we are Christians by our love. You see, everybody calling himself or herself a Christian is not a Christian. That's the problem we're having in Washington, D.C. A lot of folks claim they're Christian, but when you spew out hate and, and venom and poison and, and garbage from your mouth, that is not the way Jesus walks. And so uh, we pray for them. We pray for them. And pray for this nation. Pray for our president. Pray for the Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the verge of, 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 of deep being in deep do. We will be in deep do. Those of you who, who have ever been on a farm, you know what it's like to step in deep do. We're in deep do, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't repent as a nation and if the church does not rise up and walk in love and, and repent and pray for those who are in authority and shut down those who are walking in bitterness and anger and hatred and racism and jealousy. We've got our work to cut out for us. And so I'm glad that Dustina said that uh, the young lady slept like a baby. You know, when you're carrying turmoil in you all your life and you meet Jesus, something wonderful happens. When you're truly born again, when you're truly saved, he takes that turmoil, he takes that gloom and doom, he takes that volcano, and he calms the storm. And so that young lady slept, the, both those young ladies probably slept well that night. Destiny rededicated herself to the Lord. So we're praying for Destiny and her girlfriend, and we're praying for one another. Now you're listening. And some of you listening, you know things aren't right in your life, and you're trying to hold on, trying to make things work. If they ain't going to work. You can't make them work. You've got to be born again. And if you've been born again and you've fallen into backsliding, you're about back out there smoking dope. You're back out there drinking liquor. You're back out there chasing somebody else's uh, spouse. You need to repent. Yes, you're saved, but you need to repent. And listen, listen, and don't let your friends deceive you, and don't let some of these uh, uh, so-called pastors and prophets deceive you. You cannot continue living in sin and go to heaven. Well, once saved, pastor, always saved. I read it in my Bible. No, you did not. You never read that in your Bible. You have never read once saved, always saved in your Bible because it ain't in your Bible. It's in your head. It came from goofed up Christians goofed up people who don't know the Bible, who did not read the Word of God, and, and once saved, not always saved. Read Romans. I dare you to read Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. I double dog dare you to read Romans chapter 6, 1 and 2. That will shut down all those who say, once saved, always saved. I dare you to read through your Bible where God says, I will have no pleasure in those who turn back. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have been born again and you have fallen back into sin, you need to repent. You need to repent. Going to church ain't going to do it. Paying your tithes is not going to do it. Doing good works is not going to do it. Feeding the hungry is not going to do it. You can work, work, work yourself to death and still go to hell. I say you can work, work, work yourself to death and still go to hell. You must be born again. And if you've been born again and you backslide, you've got to repent. You got to get born again again. You've got to get that demon off of you and out of you because God is not going to let any demon spirit enter into heaven. The Bible says there's not going to be any room in heaven for liars, fornicators, adulterers, uh, deceivers, and there's a whole list in Scripture who, who many of them have claimed Jesus Christ as Lord, but continue to practice those things. No, 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 no. There's going to be a great awakening when people stand before God and, and say, but Lord, I built churches in your name. God, I built, uh, I, I fed the hungry. God, I, I gave blankets to the poor. God, I sent out prayer blankets to the sick. And the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So let's get it right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it right. Hey, when you come on the Back to Basics online church, it's tight, but it's right. Dustina, it's tight, but it's right. I know there are certain people who don't want to come on this church because we, don't, we do not stroke you. We do not stroke you. We do not pat your hand while you continue to sin. We do not give you uh, 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 green stamps when you go out and, and sin with your, your neighbor's wife. We don't give you uh, 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 
our bonus points in your bank account when you drink liquor. We don't uh, give you uh, bonus points when you sell drugs. No, no, no. You're a sinner. You need to be saved. You need to repent. You need to be born again. And we preach Christ Jesus. We preach holiness and righteousness, and you must be born again. And we, pr we tell church members, you can go to church and still go to hell. If you go to church and you keep on lying and keep on sinning like some of you are doing, you keep on being angry with others, you keep on harboring racism, you hate people because they're black, you hate people because they're white, and, and, and you, you think God's going to let you into heaven, you better wake up. You better wake up. Smell the coffee. I say you better wake up. Well, Pastor, see, that's why I don't like to come on this church. Well, you keep going where you want to go. We're, we're going to pat you on the back for sinning. We do not reward you for being a sinner. We tell you the way to get delivered, and you can be delivered. You can be delivered. It's your choice, ladies and gentlemen. You can turn this message off. You can, uh, those of you listening to the recording, you can delete the recording. You can go somewhere else where they preach a, a, a little, 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 little uh, 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 icing on the cake gospel where you're not required uh, to give an account for your sins. No, 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 a thousand times. No, we preach Jesus Christ crucified, buried, resurrected, and soon to come again. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. There's a payday for sinners. There's a payday for folks pretending to be Christians. There are, there's a payday for perpetrators. And you can be the founder of the church. Your mama can be the pastor. Your daddy can be the head of the deacon board. But if you're living in sin, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell if you don't repent. And so this ministry teaches you how to repent teaches you about the love of Jesus. No, we do not judge you. We don't condemn you. People think I'm judging them, Dustina, because I preach with fire and power. No, I'm not judging them. I, pre I preach under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, wants preachers to preach with some fire so that people can wake up, wake up, and smell the roses, smell the coffee, and get right with God. Well, praise God. That's all uh, uh, a, a, a preliminary to the sermon. We've got about 25 minutes left, and so we're going to ask um, we're going to ask uh, Ryan Trogler to come, and he's our deacon. He's our prayer warrior. We're going to ask Ryan to come and lead us in prayer, and then we're going to ask Jackie Fisher from Kentucky to read that scripture. Praise God again this week, Luke. 16 verses 19 to 31 then after that we will hear the message is there a hell part two now i'm looking at the numbers up in in our window and i'm looking at those i see online now i don't know i can't see you all listening to the recording but now that you know that i'm preaching about hell stay on board don't quit stay on board this message might change your life might change your family's life might change your neighbor's life this message might change the course of the nation we're going to hear from ryan trogler from marysville pennsylvania followed by jackie fisher Uh, good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. And, Pastor, you preached that word the way the Holy Spirit told you to preach that word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today. We want to thank you for providing and meeting all of, and exceeding all of our needs. Lord, we do want to send out a huge prayer for all the church people that's going out here and, and pray for all the Christians. And, and like Pastor said earlier, we want to pray for our president and our United States government and just pray for all the nations around the world. And Lord, just come down and, and give Pastor the knowledge and wisdom and the fire that you have already given him, more fire to teach us your word today. And Lord, we want to pray for all the souls that are lost and, and hopefully they can come to you. And Lord, we just we just want you to walk with us every second, every day of our lives. And we just want to say we thank you, we love you, we praise you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Jackie Fisher. Good morning, Pastor Carter, and good morning, church. Good morning, Jackie. Hi. Um, I, I pray that everyone has a blessed day today in the Lord as I read Luke 16, 19-31. The rich man and Lazarus 
there was a rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. So one rose from the dead. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. This is Jackie Fisher. We thank God for her reading. And I love the way she reads because when Jackie reads, she stops at the comma. The comma is a pause sign. It's like the caution sign when you're on the highway. And she stops at the period. The period is like the stop sign or the red light. She stops and then she pauses and keeps reading. Good reading. Excellent reading, Jackie. And, and good listening, everybody, because God wants us to hear his word. And uh, I praise God. I thank God that we have uh, people who can read the word and read it explicitly so that people can understand. Thank you that we have some prayer words who pray and, and pray in the perfect will of God. And so we thank you for all of you. We welcome our friend from Dubai, uh, David Carter, and we thank God for David. We'll uh, hear from him before we leave this afternoon. And so you've read the scripture, and it's from Luke 16, verses 19 to 31. Our subject is, Is There a Hell? Part 2. And now... Uh, Part two means there has been a part one. That was last week. So go to my U page, Leroy Carter, uh, and, and, and look at that um, message uh, on the YouTube or go to my website. I'm going to put the website up once again. Uh, the website has all of our, we put each of our previous week's messages on the website. So that's on the bottom of your uh, chat window right now on www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com you can go to the website and you'll find the Sunday message on two pages on the website on the home page of the website and on the page that has uh, that is entitled uh, online church so tell your friends that they can get the message and share the message and I want to say to all of our friends in Africa and Kenya and Bishop Davis, uh, I mean Bishop Elijah, and all of our friends, uh, you can go to the website and download those videos and, and share them with your congregations and with your Bible studies, and we thank God. By the way, praise God, Bishop Elijah, we want to commend you on the work you're doing. Uh, you said you all are starting the building. Hey, Jackie Fisher. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Terry. Hey, Dustina. Everybody, Wes, you all have been, you're a part of this. David, you're a part of this. They're starting their building program 
this week, this coming week. Praise God. God blessed us to send the money to our friends in Kenya, and now they can start the building program. They're going to build a building 60 feet by 30 feet. That's a good-sized building, and it will have a second floor where uh, Pastor Elijah can have living quarters and, and a guest room for guests who come by as they travel uh, through western Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, God is doing this. It's of the Lord, and God is using your offerings and your blessings, and we thank God, we praise God, and so the building program is underway in western Kenya. Jackie and I will be there next summer to visit and, uh, and, 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 and uh, proclaim Jesus Christ in that building and encourage them in the work. It's a great work. It's a great work. Ladies and gentlemen, our next step after this, after they build the, the, the uh, building, then we want to dig a well. We want to get them, get the money so they, they can dig a well, that they can sink a well on that land. And, and listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. In addition to the witness coming out of the, 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 the worshipers from that church and the testimonies and the word of God going forth, won't this be a great testimony to the glory and honor of God? A well on that property in western Kenya where people can come from far and wide and get free water. F-R-E-E. -E, free water. We want to sink a well on that property so that people from all over the countryside can have water. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a dry land there. And, if, and when people can get water, hallelujah, and we want them to be able to get this water for free, not paying for it. We, and, and it'll be free, and, and, and we want Elijah and the people to say, this is of the Lord. This is from the Lord. It's a gift from the Lord. That's a testimony. So we've got our plans for, for that portion of the world through Back to Basics Ministries. And you are a part of this. Everything we do, you're a part of this. And we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And so I thank God for uh, Ryan for reading the scripture. Thank God for Dustina and for uh, uh, Terry and everybody else for your, your testimonies. Thank God for all of you being on board with us this morning. So we want to briefly now look at uh, part two of uh, it. Part one last week was marvelous. Is there a hell? We know there is, but it's good to preach about it so that people can hear from the Lord, that they can hear what thus saith the Lord, and, and, and we thank God. On, um, there, there was a man back in the 14th century, ladies and gentlemen. He was an astronomer and a physician. His name was Caspar Pucer, P-E-U-C-E-R, P-E-U-C-E-R. And he researched and documented volcanic eruptions. And there are many people who believe that volcanoes come from the center of the earth and where, where there's a breach in the earth, volcanoes erupt and spew la lava and sulfur and brimstone and fire and, and that volcanoes come from the pit of the earth. Well, hell according to the scripture, is in the center of the earth. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you see these volcanoes erupting, it's not just a, by accident, but it's just, not just by accident. This man in the 14th century, in the 13th century, 1300s, he described that volcanoes were, he heard fearful howlings. He heard, he witnessed fearful howlings, cries and weeping and gnashing of teeth coming for many miles as these volcanoes erupted. This man, Caspar Pusa, of course they labeled him as a kook, as they always label people uh, who want to do anything with Jesus, okay? But this man uh, said they heard fearful howlings and cries and screams coming out of these volcanoes. And he said, out of the bottomless, bottomless abyss, or rather out of hell itself, rise melancholy cries and loud wailings so that these can be heard for many miles around. There may be heard in the mountain fearful howlings, weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Caspar Pucer was not alone. There are others who believe they have heard cries and screaming coming from volcanoes. Most have tried to ignore the obvious. Some simply explain the sounds of hell to some rational meaning. But there are documented screams and howlings that come out of 
uh, uh, volcanoes. And ladies and gentlemen, that's an indication that there are tormented souls. You see, a lot of people don't believe the Bible. A lot of people would rather believe science. But Jesus said there was a rich man who lived sumptuously. And there was a poor man who named Lazarus who begged at the rich man's gates, just begging for crumbs or something that the rich man would throw into the garbage dumpster. And, and the rich man died and was buried. Lazarus died and was taken to the bosom of Abraham. Now, the bosom of Abraham, ladies and gentlemen, is a, a characterization of a department of hell. Yes, hell had H-A-D, had compartments. In one place in hell, the righteous uh, lived, uh, and, and that place was called paradise. That's where Lazarus sat on and leaned on the bosom of Abraham. And, and Abraham represents God the Father. And so the righteous dead went to a place called paradise, ladies and gentlemen, in the underground, in hell, ladies and gentlemen. But there was another part of hell, and the Bible says in Luke 16, as Jackie Fisher read, there was a great uh, gulf of, uh, of an abyss. There was a great uh, divide that separated the righteous dead from the unrighteous dead. Yes, there were compartments in hell. But when Jesus died on the cross, ladies and gentlemen, you need to get this. The scripture says Jesus led captivity captive. And and paraded them before his father. Jesus uh, took the righteous dead from hell, and and which included Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David and many many others. He took the righteous dead, meaning those who had obeyed God in their lifetime, and he ushered them into heaven, ladies and gentlemen. Their spirits, their spirits, uh, living in the in in their temporary bodies in 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 paradise. Their spirits were led into heaven where they surround the throne of God waiting for, waiting for the rapture when the saints of God who are still on this earth alive will be caught up in their glorified bodies. And, and those uh, spirits, those righteous spirits, the, all of our dead relatives, loved ones, friends, neighbors, people we heard about, read about, all those righteous people who've gone on before us, they're waiting in heaven now for Jesus to come back and for the church. And then those around the throne of God will receive their glorified bodies. And so the scripture says and, uh, uh, the trumpet will sound and Jesus will stand in the clouds and, and call the church home. And the scripture says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then uh, all those who are alive will be caught up with them in the air, ladies and gentlemen. We will go into heaven. We will sit down at the, at the wedding table. There will be a wedding feast. We will be married to Jesus Christ. And then we will be co-rulers of the new heaven and the new earth. John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old heaven and the old earth were destroyed. Oh, I feel like preaching today, Jackie Fisher. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There is a hell, ladies and gentlemen. That man was in torment. He begged Abraham, please, please, please. He did the James Brown in hell. He did the James Brown in hell. Please, 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 please. Send Lazarus with some water to touch some water to the tip of my tongue because I am tormented in these flames. You tell people about that today, and there are some who claim there is no hell. There are preachers who claim there is no hell. Last week, the Pope said there is no hell. Sad, 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 Pope. That's it. And you are a sad Pope leading millions of Catholics and telling them there's no hell. If I was a Catholic, I would get my hat. If I, would get, if I was a Catholic today, I'd say, boogity, 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 shoot. If I was a Catholic, I'd run from that church and I'd run to Jesus. I'd run to a church where they preach Jesus Christ, where they preach holiness, where they preach the wages of sin is death, where they preach that there is a hell. There is a hell. Revelation says in the book of Revelation, and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up, stay woke. Wake up, stay woke. Don't let any man deceive you. Don't let anybody deceive you. I don't care if it's the Pope 
or, 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 or the dope. I don't care who he is. Don't let anybody deceive you. There is a hell. Jesus lets us know in the scripture, not only in that particular scripture, but look at what Jesus says in other scriptures about hell. Ladies and gentlemen, he says, and I'm just going to give you some scriptures. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 19, he calls hell fire. There's fire there. He says in Matthew 18, 8, everlasting fire. Ladies and gentlemen, this fire will never be quenched. It's not like those fires on the West Coast. It's not like those forest fires, Terry, in Colorado. These are fires that will never, ever, ever be put out, and the sinners will be in those fires. God did not make hell for people. He made hell for Satan and his demons. And God will not put anybody in hell. You will put your own self in there by choosing. People choose to go to hell. God says, see, I set before you life and death, healing uh, 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 or sickness. Choose life. Choose healing. God says we have the choice. He's given everybody the choice. And if you're hearing this gospel today and you're not saved, you need to repent. You need to tell God you're sorry for your sins. You need to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and be your Savior and your Lord. And when you do, you will be saved. And if you do like destiny did and rededicate your life to the Lord, you can rededicate your life to the Lord. You're not so far gone that you cannot rededicate your life to the Lord. The moment you realize you're on the wrong path, you need to say, Oh, God, forgive me of all my sins. Oh, God, deliver me from this path I'm on. Oh, God, receive me into your body. I confess my sins. I repent of my sins. And when you repent, ladies and gentlemen, when you truly repent, you'll be like destiny. You'll be like her friend. You'll sleep again at night. Hallelujah. You'll go to bed and you'll sleep at night. You won't have that restlessness in your soul. You won't have that torment in your soul. A lot of Christians are tormented today because they don't know which way to turn. They have sinned on this hand and sinned on that hand. Many are too proud to repent. But I say, proud man, sinner man, stop your foolishness and your wicked desires. Call upon the name of the Lord and repent. Jesus says hell is damnation. Matthew 23, 14. Hell is damnation. Matthew 23, 33. He talks about the furnace of fire. Mark 13, 42. He says it's the fire that shall never be quenched. Mark 9, 43. The fire is not quenched. Mark 9, 44. He says where their worm dieth not. Mark 9, 44. He says there be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 13, 42. There be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 8, 12. He says there be torments. Luke 16, 23. There be tormented in this flame. Luke 16, 24. It is the place of torment. Luke 16, 28. Outer darkness. Matthew 8, 12. Everlasting punishment. Matthew 25, 46. These are just a few scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, that talk about hell. There are many, many more, ladies and gentlemen, many, many more scriptures that talk about hell. There are over 120 scriptures that talk about hell, about 70 of them. Jesus talked about it himself. There is a place called hell. You want to avoid this place. You want to avoid this place, ladies and gentlemen. You do not want to go there. You do not want to go there, ladies and gentlemen. Every day, three people die every second. Three people die every second. 180 people die every minute, ladies and gentlemen. 180 people die every minute. And you can do the mathematics, and you see how quickly people are leaving here. They are leaving here, ladies and gentlemen. And many are leaving without a knowledge of Jesus Christ, without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I tell you, God loves you, and he does not want you to perish 
the Bible says he is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And if you will repent of your sins, if you'll turn for your, from your sins today, you shall be saved. The Bible says, what must I do to be saved? That's what Nicodemus asked Jesus. Jesus said that if you will uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. He said, he told him, no, he told him, he said that uh, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him shall not perish. Then he told him, you must be born again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. And then Paul writes in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you will be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, get saved. Get saved today. Don't delay. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Don't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow might never come. Don't wait. There might not be a tomorrow. The Bible says this day, if you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts. Repent. Repent. Cry unto the Lord. Tell God you're sorry for sinning. Tell God you're sorry for disobeying him. Tell God you're sorry for having idols in your life. Tell God you're sorry for not obeying Him and worshiping Him and ask for forgiveness. And the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. If you call upon the name of the Lord in Kenya, you shall be saved. If you call upon the name of the Lord in Iran, you shall be saved. I'm not talking about calling upon Allah. Allah cannot save you. Allah cannot save anybody. If you call upon the name of the Lord in Japan, you shall be saved. Shinto cannot save you. If you call upon the name of the Lord in China, you shall be saved. Uh, none of those Confucians, Confucianism or none of those religions will save you. Only through the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can go to church from now until hell freezes over. And if you don't confess Jesus as Lord and confess that you believe he's the Son of God, you believe he died and was buried in the ground and rose again after the third day, there'll be no hope for you unless you confess that you believe that. And so we preach Christ Jesus. He hung, bled, and died for you and for me. He substituted, substituted himself on the cross that we might have eternal life. That's the way to be saved. Trust in Jesus. Trust in Jesus. Richard, Richard Smallwood sang that beautiful song. There's a healing. There's a bomb in Gilead. He said he was wounded for our transgressions. Well, Richard didn't say that. Richard read that from Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we're healed. With his stripes. We are healed. He's already paid the price for your salvation and for mine and for our healing. And so Romans, Romans says, the book of Romans says, Thou art inexcusable, O man. Don't stand before God. Don't embarrass yourself and eternally. Don't embarrass the Almighty God by having the audacity to stand in God's face and try to present a case for him to let you into heaven when you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord. Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you. But God, but God. No, depart from me. I never knew you. You don't have to hear those words of gloom and doom, ladies and gentlemen. But you can hear the, the beautiful words, come up, sir. Come up into my kingdom. Come up, ma'am. Come up, lady. Come into my kingdom where I have prepared a place for you. Jesus said before he left this earth, it's expedient that I go away, but if I go away, I will come again and, and receive you unto myself. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. He's already prepared a place for everyone who will call on his name and be saved. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for so great salvation. Thank you, Lord, that you love us all, all mankind. No matter what we have done, you said all have sinned to come short of your glory. But you made a way of escape. 
You said, there is no temptation that has taken you, but such as is common for man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer us to be tempted above that which we are able, but will also make with the temptation the way of escape. Thank you that you made a way of escape, the scapegoat, Jesus Christ, who took our sins, bore our sins on the cross, and removed them as far as the east is from the west. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. And now, Lord, you said we shall ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. You said, if any man hear my voice and open on the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Father, we choose Jesus Christ as our Savior. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that no one listening to this uh, uh, message who is say, unsaved, no one who is that I pray that anybody who is unsaved and is listening to this message will receive salvation by inviting Jesus into their hearts. We praise you. We thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for giving your people peace. Peace. There's peace in the name of Jesus. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, with his stripes.